This video is a really short example of how I'm using manually graded task cells in a lab notebook to provide more open-ended kind of flexible spaces for students to show their work, but also have an easy way for me to assign uh, feedback and points to different parts of the lab. So I've divided up these labs, which is a three hour lab period roughly, but students can also work at home with a kit. Um, I've divided these labs into a series of tasks, like task one on day one was set up your hardware on your computer. Um, step two was let's learn how to read color codes on a resistor and measure some resistors in your kit. Uh, task three was um, build this circuit and upload an image of the circuit to uh, the, your notebook. Task four was let's actually make some measurements of currents and voltages in that circuit, and then let's work through the theoretical calculation and see if it agrees. Um, and so each one of these are implemented, not with a manually graded solution, but actually what's called a manually graded task. So for task two, I assign two points to that, and it's and it's a manually graded task. And, and what I say it at the bottom of each set of instructions is insert cell or cells below to record your answers. And I just kind of repeat that refrain just to remind them like, look, I'm not giving you a place to put your, your answer in. Um, you've got to, uh, you've got to put it in. So uh, when you, when you create an assignment like this and then you generate it, um, what you get is a release version, which looks like this. Um, so the release version uh, just has, you know, task one, that one didn't have anything to input, uh, but then task two, task three, task four, right? And the idea is, you know, after each of these cells, you can insert a new, um, insert a new cell and uh, start your work there. All right, and so it gives students a lot of flexibility in both using code and markdown. Um, once you collect these, you collect them in the exact same way as you would any other assignment in NB Grader. You have to run auto grade on them, even though my assignments have nothing to auto grade. So as long as the file name is correct and everything, it'll auto grade just fine. Um, so uh, so you just run the auto grade on them, which is a very fast process because um, there's no test cases, and then uh, and then you can manually grade it. If you go over to one of the manually graded examples of student work. Um, actually, it's right here. Uh, this is one of the submissions that was turned in for this lab. And, uh, you know, what you see is, say, for task two, where students were supposed to measure some resistors, the student input a nice markdown table where they recorded the bands, they calculated the nominal resistance, they put in their measured resistance. Um, I didn't see a place where they... Uh, kind of calculated what it, what the tolerance would be. I mean, they mentioned it's 1% here, but they didn't actually calculate uh, what a 1% variation would be and if their measured was within that. Um, so I, I deducted a little bit for that um, just because uh, that's missing. And that's what I put. So I basically get this, this cell here. Uh, I get an extra kind of like input cell like you would on any of the auto or manually graded assignment cells. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's how that works. And you just go through the lab. And in this case, the student had to upload a image of their setup. And so they built it, they set it up, they get full credit for that. And then they took some measurements and so on. So anyway, so that's how I'm using manually graded tasks. It's a little more flexible than the auto grade or manually graded solutions because students can create this free mix of markdown and code as much as they need and then you kind of grade that whole chunk of stuff once you look it over and apply the comments specific to each task. Um, hope that helps.